Well, hi there. Good evening, everybody. Mark Traversone here at Saturn Magic, and we're live on a Sunday. Uh, fortunately, we had to miss the live last week, so we've got a lot of catching up to do. So we've got two weeks' worth of uh, Magic Chat about what's been new on the market in the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so, first of all, before we get on to the actual products, I want to mention an event that we're going to on the 6th of October. It's in Milton Keynes, which is sort of central England, so it's pretty good for just about uh, everybody to get to. Uh, it's called the Secrets Magic Day, and uh, it's a great lineup of lectures actually for the day. Uh, there's Dan Harlan, all the way from the USA. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard of Dan Harlan. Fantastic magician. Uh, so it's great to just be able to see and hear him talk, let alone what magic is going to teach you as well. So Dan Harlan is going to be there. Uh, you've also got Chris Congree, very well-known British magician, who's going to be talking about wedding magic, which magic very is very big at weddings in the UK. Uh, so it uh, be interesting to see what Chris uh, shares with us on uh, his ideas on wedding magic. Uh, there's also Dee Christopher, uh, again, very well-known magician, kind of alternative kind of magic if you look at his look, uh, very much into mentalism and magic. Uh, so uh, Dee Christopher, again, very um, big name there to be on the uh, lineup as well. Uh, and another name on the lineup is Mandy Mooden. Now, I've never known Mandy, Mandy Mooden to do a lecture, actually. I'm sure she's done before, but it's by no means a regular thing. And she's doing one at the Secrets Magic Day. Uh, if you haven't heard of Mandy, she was, um, uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, she was on Britain's Got Talent and did very well during that uh, uh, series. Uh, not that she's new to magic, she's been doing magic a long time, uh, but she came into the public eye, let's say, during that uh, Britain's Got Talent run that she had. So it'd be great again to see her. So you've got Chris Congreve, Dan Harlan, Dee Christopher and Mandy Moon all lecturing at the Secrets Magic Day. Now that's some lineup for um, uh, for a day of magic, if we call it that. Uh, so it's in Milton Keynes. Uh, just Google it, Secrets Magic Day. Uh, you might have, if you have a bit of trouble finding it under Secrets Magic Day, if you uh, Google Magic Zone Enterprises, uh, then because that's the sort of website name that it comes under, and uh, we'll be there as one of the dealers. So we look forward to seeing you there. Okay, so I'm looking down at the list. Wow, well, a load of you piled in already. So good evening to uh, everyone that's there. Uh, yeah, Kieran saying she's amazing, um, and. Oh, sorry, I've been corrected there. It's in Bedford, not Milton Keynes. <laughs> so, uh, but it's in that kind of area. And uh, righty-ho. So moving on to tonight's business. Let's just turn my page over because there's that much to talk about. Let's start to set up two pages there. Right, so the first thing uh, that snuck into stock in the last week. And uh, when I say snuck into stock, I can't believe that there's not been like a almost like a little bit of a fanfare. Tenio items, they release items each year and they're very collectible. A lot of people just buy them anyway because they, you know, they know Tenio products can appreciate in value. And the, the tricks are generally, you know, pretty good. Uh, they're in, invariably quite ingenious or well made or, you know, they've just got that thing about them, Tenio products. And normally they release a lineup of products at the same time each year, but for some reason they've released one which isn't even on their website, uh, which we actually have in stock. Uh, this one here, uh, it's called uh, Super um, Prediction uh, from Tanya. It doesn't help me because it's written in uh, Japanese, so I had to try and remember what it was called there. Look at my notes. So it's called Super Prediction. Uh, if you look at the listing on our website, it's got like one sentence that tells you what the trick is. Uh, I, I somehow think that Tenyo are relying on the fact that people just buy their products anyway because they like them, uh, because the description is like one almost one sentence long. Um, there's no video demo, so you haven't got a clue what it is. Uh, but it's a card prediction where someone picks a card and the card matches. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Uh, but I just thought I'd announce that because a lot of people wait for the new 10 year stuff to come out and hopefully we'll be able to give you a little bit more info on this in the um, in the coming weeks. Uh, but uh, basically I was away last week, uh, well not all of last week but for a few days last week with Kieran so I missed out on uh, quite a bit of catch up time on evaluating the products as I normally would do for the show but I just thought I'd mention it because we've actually got it in stock ready to ship uh, so you 10 year fans can jump on the first of the new 10 year releases for uh, 19, you know, 2019 stroke 20. Uh, also uh, back in stock is, uh, let's grab the box here, 
is the uh, Ultimate Ambition from Daryl. Uh, those of you that know me will know when this came out a few months back. It's a, it's a re-release of an old trick from years ago, but it was re-released a few months ago in this fantastic uh, packaging. Not that you need the packaging, but I'm very impressed with the quality of the packaging here. And the trick inside it is just absolutely awesome. Uh, if you like Ambitious Card, uh, then, uh, and if you don't like Ambitious Card and don't do Ambitious Card for various reasons, anybody can do the version of Ambitious Card that's in here. There's two, two taught. There's a version where you need to be able to do some basic slides. Uh, and there's a self-working version, almost self-working, you just got to do it, but it's very easy, uh, included in there as well. And you can sort of combine the two and make up your own routine, but it's absolutely brilliant. And eventually back into stock, it's taken months to get this back into stock, uh, purely because when you see the gimmick and see, uh, I, you know, I like making things and I could make one of these. Uh, and in fact, mine got wrecked a few weeks ago and I was thinking, come on, please don't let me down on the restock date because... Uh, I've been missing doing this at my gigs uh, because I just hadn't got, it would probably take me about an hour, maybe a little bit longer to make one of these and I hadn't really got the time to sit down and you know make another one for an hour so I was just praying that they come back in stock and sure enough they have. So the ultimate ambition from Daryl, if you don't know what it is just check out the videos and I'll just say buy it, it's one of those tricks that uh, you will not to regret spending your money on. Uh, so that's the ultimate ambition from Daryl. Uh, another one I pointed out in um, so in an uh, email out uh, that we do um, to customers during the week, uh, I pointed out a trick called Predate by Bob Miller. Uh, now this one, I really do quite like it. Um, Bob points out, and a lot of people uh, don't know uh, the story behind a deck of playing cards, that there's uh, 365 cards in a deck, uh, sorry, there's uh, 12 suits for 12 months, um, for I'll turn that sound off. Uh, so all, all the sort of number of suits, the number 13 cards for 13 lunar cycles and so on. Uh, so a deck of cards is like a calendar. So that's what he's using in his premise. Now I will say, if you watch the video, the video is absolutely terrible. It's probably one of the worst videos I've ever, ever seen. Uh, and I've seen a few videos. Uh, so please, um, it's just absolutely uh, mind numbing to watch the trick being performed but what it does it, sh it shows you the trick and if you look behind that and uh, <coughs> hopefully a bit more engaging and a bit more presentation than you see in the video uh, you'll see that you've got uh, the very nice um, sort of 50 it's got 52 uh, on a sheet of paper with all the cards laid out and he proceeds to tell people about the months and the lunar cycles and all that kind of thing during the process he asks them for a day of the year and he has a normal deck of cards and uh, when they cut the cards um, during the routine when you get to the date that they selected as you're going through this little uh, sort of book thing that you've got uh, the card that they cut to is the one that's on the date that they set so that's the trick basically so it's sort of a uh, it's not a prediction because they cut to the card so you know you, you don't they don't know what card it is uh, and but they name the date and the two match so you know it's a great effect uh, unfortunately let down by the trailer uh, there's two versions actually there's a Neymonica and an Aronson uh, and I did wonder why they needed to say it was in a stack uh, because there's the two versions because the deck that you use isn't a stack and there isn't any memory work required um, when I had a look at it um, the only stack that there is is in like the picture when you first start um, which doesn't actually need to be in the stack so uh, or, although you could do less work if you know what the stack is if that sort of makes sense because you need to obviously uh, know what card it is that they've chosen to be able to do the effect um, but basically so if you know Aronson then get the Aronson one if you know Mnemonica get that one but if you don't know any stacks at all it doesn't matter because it's all there straight in front of you anyway uh, so that's Predate by Bob Miller, so uh, have a look at that, uh, basically look at the prop and things that you get and if you like the overall effect of the date matching the card, um, then uh, I don't think you'd be disappointed with that one. Uh, we've also got uh, Seconds Bicycle Cards uh, back in stock individually now, uh, so you can order um, red and black, uh, red and blue uh, bicycle cards individually. They're there on the website now, which will save you uh, a little bit based on the uh, regular sort of 807 0808s that we keep. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, let me just grab a pack, just so you guys know. Uh, the, this is the blue deck of normal bicycle cards uh, with the rider back. Those are the ones we keep. They're called Bicycle 807-808 stroke decks. 
Um, so these are the sort of classic rider back design that most magicians prefer. Uh, the seconds are exactly the same cards inside, uh, but they come in this box which says either blue or red, which says seconds, bicycle seconds on the front uh, and the backs are exactly the same both sides. The playing cards inside are exactly the same quality as in the cards, uh, but you may find, and so, someone told me some time back, that when they start a print run off of like a new roll of paper or card or whatever they make the cards out of, um, that the machine sometimes takes a, a little bit of a run before it settles in and starts printing everything straight. So what you do find sometimes with the seconds, uh, and actually even with the bests, if you have a look at some bicycle cards, you'll notice that the white borders on the back are sometimes just a fraction out where they might be slightly wider on one side than the other or top and bottom, uh, even on the best ones. So the, the seconds, um, you know, you can get good seconds and not so good seconds, but sometimes the border is a little bit more, you know, bigger one side than the other than you'd expect, or maybe the uh, pip is a little bit close to the edge of the card rather than being sort of where it should be. Uh, but if you're like me, burning cards, getting people to sign cards, putting them ice, all that kind of thing, doesn't really matter. You can save yourself a bit of money with seconds. So that's the quick difference there between uh, seconds and bests. Uh, while I'm rabbiting on, I will just have a quick. Uh, look down here just to see if anyone's asking to me to talk about anything in particular. Yeah, we're going to talk about Matthew Wright's stuff in a little while. Uh, Nigel's saying, will we be at the Portsmouth Jumbo Day? Now it's interesting actually because we are starting to do more conventions uh, because we're, we're doing the uh, Secrets Day and we're doing the Magic Circle Dealers Day which is a few uh, two or three weeks after that one uh, so really I have to find where the conventions are so it's one of my jobs for the next week or two uh, to find out where the magic conventions are around the country and uh, hopefully try and attend as many as possible so uh, hopefully yes we'll be, we'll be attending as many as we can uh, I do do gigs at weekends and the like so unfortunately some of them do clash uh, but uh, looking forward to next year, if I can look into next year, I can get obviously the dates pre-booked and hopefully attend as many conventions as possible. Okie dokie, right, also back in stock um, is a card in bag, you can't really see them, they're in black bags, but over here we've got a few left, it's probably about half a dozen or so card in bags uh, left up there. Uh, the uh, Dominic de Vivier effect which was on uh, Penn and Teller's Fullness. Um, so you get the black bag, you get the uh, everything you need in, inside the box there, inside the bag. And um, you also get a version on there where you don't even need to use the bag, which I thought was quite, uh, quite good actually. Uh, so there's no excuse for saying, well, I don't want to use a bag like that. I haven't got room on a table that I'm performing on. You can actually do it without a bag, which is, is quite good as well. Uh, but that's, I'm sure there's been enough said about that, so you should uh, know what carding bag is. If not, check out the trailer. It's a great trick, great performance, and uh, sort of easy to do. So if you like carding bag, uh, we have it back in stock if you've been waiting for it. Uh, also back in stock is Connected from uh, Kieran Johnson. Uh, that's been restocked. And we've also uh, announced in the last day or two uh, that... Uh, Kieran and myself, because we own iPhones, uh, have always used the Insight app uh, that is optional with Insight. Insight by Hugo Shelley that you need to use to perform Connected. Um, comes with an optional app for an iPhone which makes sort of seeing the information really, really easy. And that's what Kieran and myself have always used with Connected. Uh, so that's the way it was sort of released initially. So we're talking like a month ago probably. Um, subsequently, people have been saying, oh, it's got to be iPhone only, it's got to be iPhone only. Uh, and then suddenly the penny dropped. And it was only this last week, actually, the penny sort of dropped with us that uh, uh, Insight, uh, we, we weren't using Insight in its original form. Because when you buy Insight, you don't get the, the app. And um, the idea is, is that Insight doesn't uh, have to be used with a phone and an app. It can actually be used as a standalone device. Uh, because what it's got, it's got a built-in vibration alert uh, in the actual gimmick. 
Uh, so um, I was just thinking about it and I thought well actually there's no reason why we can't sort of adapt things a little bit and um, have it so that we can use the vibration alert as opposed to a phone. So uh, thinking about the handlings and things so we've added it now to the instruction page. So even if you have got an iPhone and you've bought connected uh, have a look at it because we explain there how you can use um, connected uh, without the phone. Um, so that if you are in a situation where you don't want to put your phone down and risk having someone see something on the screen which won't connect to connected if that makes sense uh, if you if you just don't want to have your phone out for any particular reason or don't want to have to peek your phone to get the information uh, you can actually do it uh, without any phone or app at all in a very easy and natural way um, and um, that means Connect is now available to a whole wider audience. So um, we're, we're quite looking forward to uh, the non-iPhone users starting to hear about this uh, and being able to use it. So Connect is back in stock. Uh, we also, because um, Kieran and I went off on our travels to uh, Italy just after Magical was released. That's our, uh, well not our app, but the app that we're distributing uh, for um, Infinity Magic. And uh, it's the fake call app where you can schedule a fake call on your phone uh, in numerous ways either um, by remote control you can do it by touching the phone using the phone um, so they basically just name a celebrity and you end up with a fake call coming through on your phone from that celebrity there's loads of different ways that it can be done you can have pictures on the screen you can have voice announcements you can have just text on the screen if uh, there's over 700 celebrities in the database and if they name somebody that isn't in there you can actually enter custom ones uh, there's loads of different things that it will actually do uh, those people that have bought magical uh, I won't bang on about it too long because we actually did a Facebook Live going back a few weeks ago on it. So if you are interested in the Fake Call app, then look back on our website where it says Latest Magic Reviews and you'll find one that's talking purely about Magical. I will mention here though tonight, uh, this is the remote that uh, we sort of talk about normally, which is the one that a lot of people use with Inject. Um, that's what a lot of people use. It does work with Magical, uh, but I wasn't really... Uh, but the way it works, I wasn't really happy with the sort of button positioning and that kind of thing on this and you could inadvertently push uh, the wrong button. So I started to look around and I actually came across this uh, remote, which is actually made by the same people. It's still a MoCute uh, remote control, um, but you can I'll put it close to the camera. If you just search on eBay for uh, MoCute remote uh, or iPhone remote, uh, you can see quite easily what this one looks like. There's only one that looks anything like this. It's got similar buttons and controls to the black uh, MoQ remote, but there's a few more options on the front. And also, quite nicely, on the back, let me get the light right, you can see those squares at the top, at the back there, those six squares. You've got six more buttons on the back. And uh, two of them are volume buttons, which those that have got Magical will know what they're for. Uh, but you've also got play, uh, jump back and jump forward for like music tracks and you've also got in the middle a shutter release for a camera. Uh, so it's not that you need those for the trick but what I'm saying is as an all-in remote, uh, so if you wanted to use this for what it's intended for like it's gaming or whatever purposes then you've got that which is quite nice. It's nice, slightly bigger than that one so if you got, are going to use it for a gaming type thing it's good. Uh, if you're not going to use it for any gaming and you're just using it for uh, for apps as we are and then um, you've got your different modes uh, and you've also what I've done here I've stuck two bits of magician's wax to the uh, volume buttons so in my pocket I basically just put two fingers on there and uh, just by rocking left and right I can control the inputs uh, using those two buttons on the back so there's no danger of pushing the wrong ones on the front if that sort of makes sense uh, so that's still a MoCute remote, but um, even those with Inject might want to consider um, consider this because I think it's, it just feels a little bit sturdier, a little bit better built, and um, with the camera release and the play and pause buttons and things, it gives you features which you're not going to use in the apps, but you know just for a remote for using your phone uh, or any other Bluetooth enabled device, you've just got extra features there, which is quite cool. Uh, so that's the uh, different. Uh, Bluetooth remote we found that's also compatible with Inject and uh, Magical. Okie dokie. Uh, right, so <coughs> moving on to um, 
Uh, there's James saying, show us the trick. Unfortunately, James, there's so much to talk about on these shows. Uh, and uh, you shouldn't be, put, I'm sure as magicians, you know, you should never perform a trick until you performed it. Everything I'm talking about on here is uh, brand new, apart from the ultimate ambition, I suppose. Um, and uh, like connected, there's no point showing you that because there's nobody here. Uh, to actually perform it to uh, and all of the rest of things like we're going to talk about now they're all brand new and you should always perfect practice and perform a trick until you get it bang on before you actually do it publicly so unfortunately on these shows I'm not really in a position where unless a trick is basically so simple you cannot get it wrong and um, I should not really and you, I'm sure you can appreciate that be performing tricks live on Facebook uh, or any live performance. Uh, maybe if it was pre-recorded and it went wrong, you could um, you know, do it again if you made a slight mistake or maybe flash something if you were new to a trick. But really, uh, I don't think uh, anyone would risk performing any trick because it's just not fair to the creator. I could make a bad job of performing his trick uh, purely because I haven't practiced it and that would be unfair to the actual creator. So what I'm giving you here is announcing the products that are new, giving my initial view on them, and uh, you know, hopefully you guys uh, can take uh, what you uh, what you can from that opinion. So Matthew Wright has been going absolutely uh, uh, crazy, let's say, with his releases in the past few weeks. We've had uh, Outnumbered, uh, which is the uh, uh, mini puzzle uh, type effect. Actually, I've got one out of the box here. The uh, you know these little puzzles when you're a kid where you can move the things around. Uh, so you can do uh, predictions um, where you can uh, predict the outcome that the spectator will uh, get. There's a magic square built into it. There's uh, a custom one so you can have your own prediction. And there's a solved one where all the numbers come back in order. So there's different things that you can do with that one there. That was outnumbered, the first one that came out. Uh, we then had uh, <coughs> Sharp Turn, um, which uh, is the... It's, it's when I say jumbo sharp, it is sort of a jumbo sharp. It's not actually a sharpie because of the way it's made, but it looks like a sharpie. Uh, the jumbo sharp is that sort of oval like a rugby ball. Uh, that's what this is uh, shaped and made to look like. Uh, and basically, it's a uh, an it's it's a kind of visual thing where you take the cap of the pen and when you push the cap of the pen on um, on this end, um, the pen if the nib was pointing up and you put the the cap over the nib, the nib re-exposes itself down the bottom. Uh, so then you then you sort of take the cap off and go to put it on the other end and the nib transfers again. So it's like the pen's flipping itself, uh, turning itself around basically, hence the name. Uh, so that's Sharp Turn from Matthew Wright, um, worth worth looking at. Uh, I would say with this actually, it's one of those effects, you, you can do it uh, uh, like parlour, it'd be great, stood up in front of people, no problem. If you're doing it close up, uh, you will want to control your angles, to be fair. Uh, if you do it close to your body, uh, then you're going to cover the worst of the angles, but you don't want people sort of at your sides. You want people sort of reasonably in front of you. So uh, other than that, uh, sharp turn, great effect, great visual. Uh, check out the video. Uh, our very own Mark Infinity uh, did a Facebook video. So you're on Facebook now if you're watching this live. Uh, after the show, you can look down at a few days and you'll see him sitting there at a desk and a bit frustrated because he can't get the cap on a sharpie uh, so he was doing that last week uh, while I was away on Facebook for you guys uh, we then got the floating sharpie again from Matthew Wright I don't know what went on here he like say he couldn't release like one trick every few months he's like released uh, five <laughs> six in the space of uh, one month uh, the floating sharpie again it's it, it is and does what it says um, Again, watch the video, you'll see the uh, Sharpie in the hand and it floats up to the other hand um, and that's the effect basically, it floats from one hand to the other. Uh, you can then write with the Sharpie because the Sharpie does write. Uh, you can then hand the Sharpie out to a spectator and they can write with the Sharpie and uh, you know, there'll be nothing untowards about the Sharpie. Um, so uh, one question that's been coming up with the floating Sharpie, it's been a very popular uh, release. Uh, is the uh, reset uh, because when you hand the sharpie out to a customer uh, you end up um, breaking the setup let's say. Uh, most of you will know how floating effects work and um, to be able to hand the sharpie out obviously you need to um, you know upset the setup to be able to hand the sharpie out. Uh, you do get uh, multiple gimmicks uh, with the sharpie 
so that you can reset reasonably quickly. I'd say it probably once once you get used to it, you're probably resetting sort of 20 or 30 seconds to get the thing reset to be able to do it again. Uh, you would want to do it up a corner out the way somewhere, so you don't want to be doing this in the middle of your gig. Um, the, the best way, in my view, to use this if you want to do it sort of table hopping at multiple performances, uh, then um, you wouldn't actually hand the Sharpie out for them to use. Maybe they're signing and you want to sign something as well. Uh, and you could sort of go like this and then the pen floats up to your hand and they get surprised when it goes up and then you then you can sign with the Sharpie and then you can put it back in your pocket, take the other pen back off them. Uh, and it's like that little magical moment that's there on the way or during something else that you're actually doing. That's where this, I think, has uh, really been brought out for, to have that little magical moment along the journey of a trick that you're already doing, uh, which means anything that needs signing, uh, this can uh, you know come into play in that respect. Uh, so that's the floating Sharpie from Matthew Wright. Uh, we then move on to three, um, we're covering these things very quickly, purely because of the sheer quantity of, um, of items that we've got here. Um, the next three are straight through, uh, the Hold'em and Anti-Gravity. Uh, now these are all three poker chip uh, type effects from Matthew Wright. Uh, the poker chips look like this. I'll just hold them up so you can see. So you've got a black, sort of gold and white poker chip. Uh, they are made of plastic uh, as opposed to like the clay kind of material that poker chips are made out of. Uh, they're not really meant for the audience to handle. It's for you to perform effects with them. Uh, now, there are three separate effects here, uh, but we'll come on to something about that very shortly. Uh, the first effect is called straight through. And... Uh, with that one, you take um, the, uh, the the sharpie, uh, you push the sharpie all the way through uh, the poker chip, and they can see it both sides, which is quite nice. This the kind of gimmick uh, in the past where you push things through wasn't able to be displayed in this kind of way. Uh, those of you that know your coin gimmicks will know uh, what I mean by that. And then you can take out the uh, thing obviously show the poker chip both sides that it's perfectly normal uh, they can check out the pen and uh, after that then they can check out the poker chip uh, so that's uh, straight through when I said I haven't had a chance to try things out <laughs> this week that one's so easy to do that um, I could basically do that one almost well, straight out the box once I quickly watch the instructions that one's very easy uh, the so that's a sharpie through chip basically uh, so that's straight through. Uh, the Hold'em uh, is, and it says it on the packet, so it's no secret, this is a four-in-one locking chip. Uh, so this one, there's, there's various locking sort of uh, coins and, and that available on the market. Uh, and this one uh, is, again, one chip as far as the audience are concerned. Uh, you could obviously start off with uh, no chip, um, you know, you could be, uh, you know, standing like, you know, like this to the audience so that they can't see anything or in other, any other kind of thing. And then you can produce a chip and then uh, you can go like this and sort of blow or look over there and suddenly you've got another one. And there's loads of different ways of actually using it. Uh, so you've got two chips. Oh, sorry, no, you've got three chips uh, and uh, you can give a little wave. And then we've got four chips. <laughs> uh, so we've got four chips. Let's uh, get that one there, blow, so we've got one chip there, it gets very confusing if we put, uh, yeah, if we take that chip, and what's going on here, so we've got four, we have got four chips, yeah, it's four in one, that's what it's called, uh, so we've got four chips, uh, in that hand we give them a little squeeze and it just goes down to one chip, and then uh, put everything together, give it another little squeeze, and we have now only got one chip and then you can vanish that. So you can do any routine that you like. I'm no coin expert, uh, but basically you've got a four in one sort of locking set there uh, that enables you to perform different routines. Uh, the last one, uh, I won't bother getting out because there's lots of bits and bobs in this little packet here. Uh, this one is based on uh, Matthew's Final Destination that he released quite a few years ago. Final Destination, when it first came out, was very, very expensive. It was $500 retail price and uh, eventually came down to about 250 with some different coins. I think there were maybe half dollars that he released it in for $250. 
Uh, but now you can do the sort of final destination, which is a three fly effect basically. So you get everything in there to do the three fly effect. Uh, and you get the uh, floating coin that goes across as the last travel. Uh, Matthew, when he came up with his three fly uh, routine, always felt that the last coin going over was the was the problem one for the magician and anyone that's done three fly will know that was the case and uh, so what he decided to do was make the coin float across vis visually as his kicker for the end of his coin routine so a very high price tag it was made out of real coins now he's uh, eventually had these uh, chips manufactured uh, which enable you to do that effect for a fraction of the price uh, talking about the prices, uh, the Sharp Turn is £23 and a few p. Uh, the Floating Sharpie £32, whatever, and the Hold'em, uh, sorry, the Hold'em is uh, 46 and the Anti-Gravity 45 straight through 27 Hopefully I got the prices right there, so all the different prices. But what you can do, all of the poker chip effects, uh, which add up to roughly £118, you can get them in one set called the All In set uh, for 74. So for uh, less than the price of the two dearer ones, uh, you can get all three. So not a bad deal there if you fancy getting a load of uh, poker chippy type gimmicks to do some great effects. Uh, so that's the um, that's a quick roundup of all of the latest stuff uh, from Matthew Wright. Uh, Oh, Matthew's watching. <laughs> Very nice handling of the Sharpie through. Um, there was me getting confused with the um, uh, with the um, four in one. Uh, but as I said, I'm not a coin guy. But uh, no, uh, have a look at those, and we've got them in stock. All of those variants uh, ready to ship. Uh, what haven't I liked this week? Uh, I normally uh, mention something this week that I wasn't too uh, pleased with. Um, there's a, uh, a, th a thing on the website called Vanishing Peace by Zihu, Z-I-H-U, uh, which looks absolutely fantastic in the trailer. This bit of a card disappears. I must admit, if you look at the pieces in the trailer, they don't look particularly, uh, how can I say, realistic or organic kind of thing. They look a bit uh, flat, if I say. Well, that's because they are, actually. <laughs> uh, but the, the actual, yeah, it's nice, you know, that one of the pieces disappears and appears on the next hand but um, the, the actual vanish is like self-working but to get to the production bit that isn't self-working not that that's a bad thing because the cards folding up in in quarters so I'm sure you guys know what you have to do to get a card folded up in quarters uh, join a routine and then you make the gimmick makes the sort of thing disappear um, I do wonder though are your spectators really going to think that these two really neat flat looking playing cards and then when you do the reveal over here, you've got this very 3D looking card. Are they really going to believe it's the same thing? Um, and I've also got a bit, a bit of a thing that the, the method for the vanish isn't new either. Now, it's very cheap. It's less than £19, but um, uh, it's not really new. The, the way the piece disappears, it doesn't look particularly convincing. Um, OK, they're not charging the earth for it, but, you know, surely, the, um, you know, I don't know, there should be a little bit more original or a little bit more thought went into things than this. Um, yeah, it does look good on video, uh, but really one, I'm not really going to go on about it anymore. It's one that's, I think, really worth steering clear of uh, and not really uh, not really that recommended. There's far better things on the market that uh, can have some a card transposed from one place to another, basically. Uh, actually, talking about very good things on the market, uh, we have actually got back in stock, uh, got... Just a few left now, actually, over there. The E2, the Extractor gimmick. Uh, one of the best card gimmicks that there's uh, ever been, uh, where the playing card can be put back in the deck, in the box. Um, so the deck's in the box, and the spectator can push the card in wherever they like, and you can then do whatever you want with it. You can do a mind read on them and tell them what their card is. You can get the card out of the deck and put it somewhere impossible. Uh, which, to be honest, if uh, I know it's £50, but you, know, you could spend £18 on that vanishing piece, uh, and on their thirty pounds on something else, and not end up with anything absolutely incredible. The the extractor, you can do some amazing routines with that. You can read people's mind as to what card they've picked in an impossible way. You can get the card out and put it back in a sealed deck 
it that's a different colour and the card will be reversed in the actual position that it should be. You can do loads of things with the extractor. So for 50, and the tuition's great and there's lots of things you can do and for 50 quid it's worth 50 quid of anybody's money. A bit like the Ultimate Ambition, uh, everyone should have the Ultimate Ambition I think it's a great great trick and everyone should own the extractor as well. So if you don't own the extractor it's worth saving up and getting one. So uh, just having a quick look down uh, your list here, see if anyone's <laughs> Matthew saying four in one look great too. I hope it hope it did. Um just having a look down see if I've missed any questions from you guys. Uh, any thoughts on the foot switch for Spectro? Okay, yeah, I had, uh, actually Steve, who's on the live at the minute, said to me, do I want the um, toe switch, actually, not foot switch, but yeah, I know what you mean, it's operated with the foot. Uh, do I need the touch switch for uh, Spectro Touch? Um, now, <coughs> the, the features that are built into Spectro Touch means that you don't actually need it. And when I spoke to Steve about it, I said, well, really, you don't need it. It's got a good timer delay and that kind of thing on it. So, no, you don't actually need um, the toe switch. Um, so um, he said, oh, okay, and he just got the actual unit itself. Um, subsequ uh, subsequently then, uh, a week or two later, he actually did order the toe switch. And when I looked at it, when it came, I hadn't really taken that much notice as to how much the toe switch was because I'd, I'd uh, like had a play with the Spectro Touch and watched instructions, all that kind of thing. And thought, well, you don't need a toe switch here. Uh, and I never really took much notice as to how much it was, but I, can't, um, I wasn't planning on talking about it tonight, so I don't know how much it is, but it's certainly not very expensive. Um, and actually, when Steve said he was ordering the toe switch as well, I thought, well, actually, for that price, you may as well get it, because at least the set that you've got uh, is then complete, and then you know maybe sometime in the future you might find the toe switch is advantageous. Uh, personally, in the past, when there's been products with toe switches, I've always been a little bit dubious of them because you could possibly set them off by accident. So, you, you know, you don't want to be uh, doing like a touch thing and suddenly the spectator raises their arm and you haven't done anything because you've moved your toe or something and you've ended up triggering the thing. Um, so it is that's the only negative, really, that you've got to be careful that you don't actually trigger it because, you know, if you move your toe or whatever on stage in the wrong way, then obviously it will go off. Uh, with toe switches, you can actually, um, the, the natural thing that you would think is that it would be underneath your toe, so you would push down, um, which, you know, is, is a fine way of uh, operating it. But that would mean then if you were walking around the stage, you'd have to be careful not to walk on your toe, otherwise it will obviously go off. Um, I haven't looked at the instructions for the uh, Spectro Touch actually to see if they recommend this, but normally uh, I would say mount a toe switch above your toe so that to set it off you raise your toe up rather than uh, push it down. Uh, that can be a little bit harder to mount uh, a switch because it needs to be above whereas it's really easy to put it at the bottom. Um, but um, you know so um, it's just one thing to bear in mind with toe switches in general you just need to be careful you don't actually set them off. Uh, but no I'd say if you bought Spectro Touch and you're liking what it does then it's probably a worthwhile accessory to get to add to it. Uh, actually, I just uh, Nigel just mentioned something there about uh, Matthew's tutorial on uh, Invisible Thread. Um, he does actually do that on the um, on the Invisible Thread items, where you get quite an in-depth tutorial explaining all the different types of Invisible Thread and what they are. Uh, particularly the floating, uh, well, it is the floating items, obviously, that uh, use the Invisible Thread. And um, the one that Matthew supplies with it is very strong. Uh, if you're used to using Spider Thread. Um, then you'll know that that's all loops then that's quite easy to break that you know you can still work with them perfectly well uh, but when you're trying if you're trying to do anything um, you know that's like moving things or whatever with them you have to be a little bit careful uh, Matthew's thread is very very strong uh, we did a comparison some time ago actually and we had some Vectra thread and Matthew's thread and then we got our uh, Saturn Magic thread as well and we sort of compared them all and um, the, the three were sort of pretty close as to how they perform. So Matthew's thread is sort of, you know, as strong as, uh, as all of those three. What you find though is that the, uh, because the like Vectra, the Saturn Magic thread and Matthew's thread are all very strong, um, you have to sacrifice a certain amount with the, um, 
invisibility of the thread. Uh, I know it's called invisible thread anyway, which all, th well, no thread is invisible. It's only invisible if it's used in the right sort of environment. So you've got to make sure your writing, and, uh, your lighting and your clothing is good. Uh, but that's fully explained in the tutorial that Matthew does. So yeah, good point there, Nigel. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, that's a very good background and tutorial uh, that Matthew gives on invisible thread um, in the tricks there. Okie dokie. I don't think um, I've missed any questions there. So and Michael's saying something's not in stock, but it looks like uh, that may have been put right, whatever the item was we were talking about. Um, oh, Astonishing Bottle. Yes. Um, I think there might only be one or two left. So the, the Astonishing Bottle finally came back into stock as well. Uh, that's been incredibly popular since it was performed on uh, BGT. And I'm trying to think who that was by. Um, I don't know if it was Mandy Mooden or uh, one of the others in the last year. Oh no, John Archer, that's who did it. John Archer did the Vanishing Bottle on BGT. Just showing how much fun you can get out of a prop that's very easy to use. And uh, it's like that with a lot of props actually. It's all about what you do with them, not necessarily the routine that you're given with them. Uh, and it's great when you see someone like John Archer put his comedy spiel on a prop that, um, you know, is, is a comedy type prop anyway, but it was great to see John Archer use it the way he did. Uh, they've been out of stock for a long time, but they are eventually back in stock uh, presently. So if you want Vanishing Bottle, uh, sorry, Astonishing Bottle, uh, then um, have a look at that one. Uh, actually, one item that I'll point out which did come into stock, I'll just go and grab it. Uh, is this one, uh, Vanishing uh, Milk Bottle, uh, which I thought was quite a nice little prop. Um, it doesn't really look like a typical milk bottle as, uh, per se, let's say. You can see it's, a, uh, it's, it's an acrylic plastic type bottle, so it means that if you drop it or uh, bounce it around in your box, it's not going to break. Uh, but the idea is, is that you fill it with milk or any other um, liquid that you want, but they say milk bottle, which I suppose it does look milk bottle-ish. Uh, it's meant for a stage performer, so it's not meant for close-up. Uh, and it's one of those that works on the same sort of principle as the uh, vanishing glasses, uh, sorry, vanishing liquid in glass, where you uh, fill the bottle up with the liquid, uh, you hold on to it uh, like this and the bottle looks full, and then you can get a puppet uh, or yourself, uh, and uh, just by adjusting slightly, the liquid starts to go down on its own and you end up just with a small amount in the bottom of the bottle. Uh, and then... Um, it looks like you've drunk it, which is great for use with a puppet uh, or uh, any other way that you choose to use it. Uh, so I just thought I'd mention that one actually when we were talking about bottles. This came into stock and it's a nice big visual thing uh, and very nice when you see the level of the liquid going down. Uh, the, what, there is a glass on the market, I think it's called Wonder Glass, which is a sort of Perspex glass with uh, three gold things across the top of it. Uh, that does exactly the same. Uh, it doesn't quite operate in the same way, but it gives the same effect. Uh, the thing that I didn't like about that is that the top's not empty, whereas, you, you know, you can see down in here it looks like a normal bottle. And um, if, you, if, if someone was to look to the top of it, then, you know, that they could see that, you know, it wasn't open on the top, uh, whereas this one is. Uh, the reset isn't as quick as the glass ones, so that's sort of a trade-off, uh, but if you're just doing a show and you're doing it once in the show, uh, then that's all you need it for anyway. So I just thought I'd mention that one actually when we were talking about bottles. So that's the Vanishing Milk Bottle. Yeah. Since I just looked around and at that, I thought, actually, let's have another look around and see what's uh, come back into stock uh, recently. Uh, Rejoined Express, we've got over there, that's uh, come back into stock. Uh, actually, we've got an illusionist order due, hopefully, in the next week. Uh, it's been dispatched, so the pyro wallet should be back in stock uh, fairly soon. Uh, isolated, we've just got... Uh, well, actually, I was going to say we've only got one left. Um, we've been uh, beavering away last week to make some more, uh, and um, we'll be f hopefully reasonably well stocked back on isolated uh, next week, because we've just got one left on the shelf there, but more of those back on stock soon. Okay, uh, quick look around, see if there's anything else that I can spot that... Uh, oh yeah, something new coming in on uh, Monday is uh, Oh So Juicy. Uh, that's the chewing gum effect. 
Um, that really is quite nice. You can show the pack of chewing gums closed, a wave, and the pack of gum, um, sort of you can see the sticks on the end, it opens on its own, and then you can uh, drop the packet and the packet disappears and you're left with sticks of gum. Uh, so a very visual uh, disappearance or unwrapping of a pack of chewing gum, very easy to do and uh, an ideal lead into uh, Revelation gum which we've got sitting up here. Uh, you can see Revelation gum is sitting in front of the cards in bag. Uh, that's all of our stock. There's one lonely Revelation gum sitting on there on the shelf just waiting for somebody to buy it. Uh, so hopefully someone's going to give it a home soon. It's been selling very well in the past few weeks. And, uh, but don't worry uh, when it goes, because we've got the Milton Keynes Day that we said uh, coming up in a couple of weeks' time. So <laughs> the elves are going to be making more Revelation gums and we'll have them there ready in time for Milton Keynes. But there's just one left sitting on the shelf if anyone wants to grab that one there. <coughs> cool. So... Uh, that's all I've got for this evening, so thanks for tuning in everybody, uh, looking forward to a good uh, good week this week, uh, we've got lots of things to make ready for all these conventions, so don't forget to check out the uh, Secrets Magic Day uh, online there, great lineup. get your tickets bought in advance I think to save a little bit of money, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there, or uh, if not there, see you live online, uh, hopefully uh, very soon, uh, maybe next Sunday we'll let you know, cheers, bye now.